Five stocks I'm buying December 2022. This is the season to be jolly and I couldn't be more happier with these five investments. I'm gonna show you guys why these are on my nice list in terms of valuations, why these companies are growing fast, what are the prospects for the future, and some short-term trading opportunities as well. So if you like this type of content, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. All right guys, stock number one here is not a stock actually, it is the K-Web. Chinese index fund. KWeb is one of the biggest Chinese index funds out there with a lot of Hong Kong listed stocks in there. Big companies like Alibaba, Tencent, JD. As recently as November, a lot of these hit their all time lows. Alibaba, for example, traded down to $60 per share, which is almost as worse as when it IPO, essentially erasing almost a decade of growth. But now I think a lot of these stocks do have a lot of potential for a number of reasons. You have the delisting fears for these Chinese stocks. A lot of these companies have listed secondaries on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in case they get delisted in America. But over the course of this year, regulators from the US and China have been working together and they've been able to get preliminary audits done. Number two, most of these Chinese companies have been regulated like crazy over the past two years now. First, China put a big ban on online tutoring then they took down video games. Then they decided to fine a lot of these big tech companies like JD, Alibaba, Tencent. But over the past year, there has been a notable shift in the rhetoric that a lot of these regulators and politicians in China have been coming out towards these tech companies. And regulation in China now, I think, is well past its peak. The third thing here is that a lot of people worried that China would go into a recession. And there was obviously the whole thing with Evergrande when everyone thought that the real estate bubble in China would burst and everything would come crashing down. That so far has actually not been the case. Now it's true that China's growth is as slow as it's been in a long, long time. If you look at the GDP, if you look at consumer sentiment, the way people are spending, we just got a report recently saying that manufacturing demand has come to an absolute collapse. But at the end of the day, these companies so far, they still look like they're making plenty of money and the fears look like they are once again overblown. And number four, the easing of lockdowns. This has contributed to the recessionary environment in China, but as things open up and we do see a gradual shift in policy from total lockdowns where you can't leave your house for two weeks to the focus on vaccinating the elderly instead, that is seen as a positive factor for Chinese stocks going forward. But on a technical basis, if we look at some of the Chinese stocks and their charts, you'll also see widespread capitulation. And diving deeper into the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, the Hang Seng Index, you can actually see that this has been in a defined downtrend all year. We now actually reached a point where we broke through resistance on this downtrend line for the Chinese stocks and they are making what appears to be a big comeback. So some of the Chinese names that I like if you were to buy individual stocks here would be Baba. I really like BYD as well. In the EV space, I featured that in my stocks to buy a few times already. JD, obviously an e-commerce play. It has a cloud function as well, but I really like their logistics network that Baba does not have. There's also Futu, the Chinese brokerage company that runs the Moomoo trading app. This is what I personally use to trade and do a lot of research. All of these screenshots that you see right here are from the app directly. So a lot of resources, fundamental and technical analysis tools. They're running this promotion right now where you could get free stocks even if you deposit $1. If you're interested, make sure to check out the link in the description. Moving on to stock number two here is MP, MP Materials. Now, some people may know that MP Materials is formerly a SPAC, the most hated investment vehicle out there. Stands for sh piece of uh, crap. All right, I'm just kidding. But the point here is that most SPACs out there, if you look at them right now, are trading way below their $10 price point. In fact, a lot of them are actually trading at 90% down. But MP is pretty much one of the only SPACs out there that I'm aware of that is actually doing really, really well. So MP is a $5 billion company in the rare earth mining space. This is the only North American producer at scale, and they own 15% of the global market share. The rest of it is primarily China. And we know that with everything going on with trade tensions and the whole thing with deglobalization, that 
that we want to focus on making sure that our supply chains are in the United States. And MP is pretty much the only player that can do that right now. So you have the rare earth mining for those elements. The elements get produced into magnets and those get driven into EVs and electronics and other end products. These magnets are going to be in 90% of EV motors. MP is developing right now to own that entire supply chain. And it has a supply deal in place right now with General Motors for the next couple of years for them to produce magnets for them. Being a commodity, those prices are going to fluctuate up and down, but over time with that huge demand that I expect there to be, the price of these elements should continue to rise. Over the past five years, if you look at the trends, there have been big ups and big downs, but for the most part, if you look at it as a whole, the price of these elements has multiplied. And we see this growth for MP. Last quarter, revenue grew by about 25%, but net income grew almost 50%. And that's even after accounting for costs of their development into phase two and phase three of their manufacturing plans. And it trades at a pretty fair valuation of around PE of 20. And by the way, if you do want all of my trading and investing alerts in real time, as well as my team of analysts, make sure to check out the Stock Dads Discord. In our community, you get real time alerts on all the trades that we make, and they're suitable for all types of traders and investors, short term day traders, swing traders, long term investments. We also have crypto and sports betting. In addition, we have a one on one mentor program that was nationally recognized and this is a way for you to get a personalized learning plan so you can become a well-rounded trader check out the link in the description or stockdads.com moving on to stock number three here is Alta in the specialty retail space now in my portfolio I have a lot of tech companies dividend stocks but I don't quite have a retail company and this one is still attractive to me because it is a growth retail company so this is a 24 billion dollar company if you don't know Ulta has a lot of beauty stores and beauty is a category that I find pretty recession resistant at the end of the day even if you know people don't have a whole lot of money they still want to look pretty good and Ulta carries a lot of brands that are at a more affordable price point than some of the more high-end luxury type of stores. Now, when we look at some of the fundamentals for Ulta, we see a PE ratio of 21, which is pretty reasonable considering the growth that it has. So even during this recessionary environment that we're in, last quarter's revenue growth was 17%, which was pretty good. But then we have the net income growth, and that is 27%, and that is a really, really good number right there. Compared to the average S&P 500 growth rate, which is around 5% or less as of the last quarter, this is doing several times better than that. Two more things that I picked up on Ulta is that 95% of their sales is from rewards members, so they can leverage that data to a great effect, and it just makes their whole business more sticky. And Ulta is well perceived as a pretty young brand for young people, Gen Z focus right there, so they have a lockdown on consumers for the next decade. And finally, if you're not even investing in Ulta but looking at it as a trade, I think it's really promising here. It's at an all-time high breakout, so you can see the breakout above 450, and this looks set to continue to go higher. It has really positive momentum it has good earnings behind it it's in a resilient industry whether there's a recession or a good economic environment so Ulta is definitely one to watch here stock number four is Enphase a huge growth company in the solar system space a lot of people may know that there's always a bull market somewhere and solar stocks have definitely been that for 2022 especially with the newly passed inflation reduction act a couple of months ago all these companies are set to benefit from widespread subsidies to these green renewable energy types Type of companies and Enphase is really interesting here because it has a total package solution they leverage semiconductors and their own software in their storage systems so that it has the best in class product Enphase is expanding globally and they have millions of these systems out there right now now I'm not the biggest expert on green energy and ESG but I mean if you look at some of these numbers from the environmental impact 3.5 billion gallons of gasoline not consumed 31 million metric tons of co2 prevented from entering the atmosphere it's just very, very impactful stuff. Now in the roadmap, they also have a portable energy system and an EV charger, and the total addressable market for those is expected to expand rapidly over the next two or three to five years. As they expand their products and their core business continues to thrive over the next few years, as more people get smart homes, then we're gonna see a bigger expansion of more dollars that Enphase can grab from each household. You look at some of the projections right here, 2019 Enphase potential per home, $2,000. That rose to $9,000 in two years to 2021. And 2023 beyond, they're expecting to grab $12,000 per home. Now projections aside, let's look at some of these fundamentals that we have right now as far as PE, revenue growth, and net income growth. 
So the PE ratio for this company is admittedly sky high. You're looking at a PE of around 150 here as of this recording, which normally says do not buy this stock. But you look at the revenue growth in the past quarter, 80%. That revenue growth is premium. 80% is higher than almost every company out there in the entire stock market at this size, right? Enphase is not just a random small cap stock. This is almost a $50 billion company here today. Net income growth, 400% in the past quarter to over $100 million. If this continues to compound as we believe it will be, then this PE ratio doesn't look that bad after all. Last but not least, we have stock number five and that is Perry, hashtag Perry Pals. If you've been watching the channel, you know that I've been banging the table for this stock every single month that we have a stocks to buy video. It's such a huge conviction buy for me. I don't know why anyone else is not talking about this stock. I've gone on and on about this one, so I'm gonna keep this short for this video. Perry is in the ad technology space. There are a number of players out there like TTD, Magnite, but Perry's valuation as well as growth far exceeds all of those. This is only about a $1 billion company here. It trades at a PE ratio of about 15, which is extremely cheap because its growth is way off the charts. If you look at the ad technology sector as a whole, it's growing at about 20% compound annual growth rate over the past couple of years. Perion, meanwhile, is growing at about 40% compound growth rate. Recent revenue growth over the past quarter was 30 plus percent. When you have a bad environment for ad technology right now, just look at the social media companies, ad budgets are being cut, but this company is doing really, really well despite that. It's a diversified business in search and connected TV, about 50-50 split there. They are a supply partner for Microsoft for Microsoft Bing and their net income growth, 100%. And I've never seen a company consistently beat estimates for revenue and net income every single quarter like Perion and actually raise guidance almost every single quarter as well for the past couple of years. I don't know how this company is so cheap compared to other tech stocks. It has such a low valuation. Not to mention this company has a cash pile of $390 million and no debt on their balance sheet. There's almost no risk here. You have low valuation, not even PE. You, you do other valuation metrics like EV to EBITDA. You look at the price to sales. They're all lower than it should be. Revenue growth, net income, way higher than most companies out there. And finally, no debt and all cash. Sounds good to me. So Duran, the CEO, man, I gotta give props to you. You have been killing it. And this should be trading, in my personal opinion, at least double the current stock price. Those are the fundamentals, but looking at the technical analysis here on the chart real quick, you can see that this stock has been consolidating for the better part of about two years now. But within that consolidation, you now see a breakout on the weekly chart, and it's been going up ever since. From about 20 to 26 here, it had a high of 28 recently. And is it still a buy? Based on all of this data, absolutely. You will not catch me selling a single share unless this is $40 tomorrow. All right, guys, so those are my five stocks to buy for December 2022. You have Chinese stocks with a KWeb ETF, Ulta, Enphase, MP, and Perion. Comment below what you think about those stocks and let me know your investing goals for 2023. And if you do want personalized help, there is, once again, the Stock Dads Discord. Be sure to check that out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.